What just happened? We went from Star Wars Destiny Drought to Star Wars Destiny Overload. We dive deep into the announcement of the new draft set, Allies of Necessity, and the future of casual play. We also take a look at new card spoilers com from Convergence. These downgrades just got serious. This is episode 119. Is there a draft in here? You have been well trained. No. You don't have to carry a sword to be powerful. No. I won't fail you. Oh, do not. I'm not afraid. There is no trap. Uh, I'm happy about what happened at the Super Bowl. I don't know about you guys. What? The fact that the fact there was no Star Wars trailer. I'm not. No happy. spoilers. There was nothing. <laughs> well, I, I mean, life. Disney did drop uh, Toy Story Four. There was a trailer for that, and there was mm -hmm. the uh, Avengers trailer. Yeah, both of the the Captain mm -hmm. Marvel and but the, I was and the but uh, okay. the rumor of a Star Wars trailer was all lies. No, yeah, that's fun. We don't need trailers. But I, I here's what I appreciate about Star Wars recently. Um, I don't know if you guys saw that they just announced all the tie-in material to Galaxy's Edge, which yeah. is for anybody who's not up on the the world of theme parks, Galaxy's Edge. But to what um, uh, the Black Spire Outpost is the land they are building both in California and uh, right here in sunny Florida. Uh, and it's an extension of our theme parks, 14 acres of Star Wars goodness, a miss immersive environments. Uh, nice. And they have now tied the first, the first time of course was Thrawn alliances, uh, which took place on this particular uh, location. Um, but now they're, now there's like a, a, a series of comic books coming out, tying into really? some of the creatures you're going to see in the land. There's a couple of novels, a couple of young adult books. Uh, huh. There nothing, no one like Disney can synergize. Uh, across all their uh, properties uh, like they can so it's called creative cash grab <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it is a if, business because if you make the book i'm gonna read it if you make a comic book i'm gonna buy it if mm -hmm. you got action figures my kids are gonna want them but then we gotta get a second one that stays in the package that goes on the shelf over there and <laughs> there's rules to this kind of stuff and disney knows how to get into my pocketbook well, any That's Star it. Wars fan, basically, and now and then, yeah, they already get my annual pass money and my Disney vacation money, so I'll be there to be in the Star Wars land, you know, drinking at the cantina. That's just that will be pretty cool. That's where I'm going to stay from with now the, on. With uh, the with the DJ, who's the robot, uh, retired robot from the Star Wars run. Yeah, sounds good to me. Nice. <laughs> um, uh, Kim, hey, there is a crazy rumor going around, which I believe is true. Oh, and it's this true. Is related to Star Wars Destiny. It is. Um, our own Matthew Scott has proved this rumor to be true. Um, and I've seen one other uh, piece of photographic evidence online. If you, I believe you have to go into the store. I don't know if this is valid. I did not have time to check. Um, but they're selling Destiny packs for like 20 some cents a piece. Mm -hmm. So you can get an entire box for nine ten maybe tops 15 bucks legacies Whoa. and way of the force legacies yeah legacies and way of the force is what i'm seeing if it you can find them, what any. it is yeah uh, in <laughs> fact while you guys are while you guys are talking i will use my lte since my wi-fi is bobkiss <laughs> i well i uh i was looking because i heard about the deal and i was like i've got to my guess is you can't one. do it online but no you can't do it online mm -hmm. um the online they're like all oh, these stores have it in stock you know there's like a thousand game stops within a mile of your of my house but the only oh, wait. one have destiny so, or like oh now oh. okay hang on so i'm on their site right now and it has legacies boosters 24 cents online only don't you all run out there because i'm in the middle of doing this <laughs> wow well, i mean it anyways. says online only and then it says unavailable online so never mind Womp womp because womp the deals womp. are even out. They're all sold out everywhere. Probably. Well, yeah, it was here's... a nice drive. You guys all yeah. missed out. Probably in store. Although still. you can do oh they have the Ray Jaku Ray anyway. Um they have the Jaku Ray for ten dollars. Um Got it. it does price for this it. has pickup at store though. So you may be able to do it. You may be able to do a pickup at your local store. There may be, still be some out there. I had a store who was going to hold the one pack they had for us. I was not going to drive uh, half an hour to a store to pay 24 cents for one pack. 
for no. one pack. That's probably so. not much in it. <laughs> no, I'd be I'd get out there and be like stealth or what was it? What um, oh, what's that one that no one wants? Anyways, that one. Uh, there's a ton. How about bar- <laughs> how about ton. barter? I give you, there you go. 26 <laughs> barters. <laughs> So, yeah, so you may want to go check your local. If you can get to one, I may try to stop. There's one right. I work very, very close to a mall. Mm -hmm. And there's a game. Actually, that GameStop is where I got my Chewbacca um, for ridiculously cheap. So I may have to poke my head in there tomorrow at lunch. Wes is trying to. uh, Asterisk, see episode 117. Wes is trying to uh, pimp his store in the chat over here. Nice. They got starters over at level 10. Level 10 is one of the uh, local game stores uh, here in Santa Cruz. Yeah, Wes is a good dude. What's up, Wes? Um, Yeah, so if you need Destiny, go to level 10. He'll hook you up. Uh, You know what? There's too much to talk about. Let's just roll right into it. Let's do it. Let me take that back, huh? Let me find what you need. (laughs) Uh, There were a few. They have been ramping up every weekend, uh, always uh, somewhere between five and ten regionals. Um, They've been happening around the world. Uh, Great turnout for the ones here in the United States. Uh, Almost all of them, all of them had over 25 players. Um, Most of them had in the 50s. Milwaukee, great job with 66 players and a great variety of meta. I think this is, we're now starting to see things, uh, I don't want to say subtle, but like, you know, I mean, it all depends on where you are too. Look at Poland. Uh, it was um, Han Kira, no allegiance. Uh, the the um, the neutral, bring your yellows, all the all the stuff. That's yeah, the pairing we haven't seen be so successful. Um, but uh, oh, and it was both winner and runner up. Took took top two there. Um, you know, Vader Greedo still still showing up, but Tarkin Snoke is coming back in the playing field. People are like, hey, Snoke's really not gone. Uh, we mm-hmm. just need to find a different pairing for him, and Tarkin seems to be the favorite. Um, anything else stand out to you guys in terms of uh, what we see uh, this last weekend? Uh, Winnipeg, they had the Yoda Gungan higher gun. I was just Pretty looking at that, yeah. With uh, armored reinforcement. And then, <clears throat> surprisingly, runner-up uh, Vader Greedo. Yeah, trying to get those uh, fat vehicles out there. Um, what I like about this Yoda hired gun Gungan is that there's actually some firepower in the characters themselves, and it's not relying solely on that vehicle that you get with armored reinforcement. Mm-hmm. Hired mm-hmm. hard gun got that three for one. Yeah, got a couple three for one sides. Hired gun is um, really irritating to sit across from, especially when you see him at least two wide, like in a three wide. Just yeah, pretty. And you got an elite, pretty irritating. And you got an elite Yoda who's rolling specials for days. Yeah. Yeah. So he's so. just focusing up higher gun, taking a resource, and then firing off, which and is then whatever. Yeah. And I'm sure the armored reinforcement is some was bringing out some awesome vehicle, which might as well be in your starting lineup. I mean, when you think about it. Yeah. That's really that's really what that card does for you. Yep. I was surprised with I'm surprised to see. Um, I don't know. I guess I thought Gungan was squishy, so it was interesting to see this do so well with the right pairing. I mean. I guess that goes to show you, like, you know, on their own, they can be a little squishy, but paired right. Hey, hey, Kim, you see the runner-up in Milwaukee? No, hang on. There's too many listed on here. I know. It's the third. Uh, Kylo Wolf. <gasps> someone, that stuck back up again. Brought that back in. So Wolof. good to see that that Wolf, Wolf, Wolof. that deck has some legs. So. I'll have to mention that uh. I haven't seen uh, my local Mike Hill. Not my... The one I look at today, but my local Mike Hill, he'll, I wonder if he saw that or not. That's in, I mean, in a 66 player field, too. Yeah, that's, that's pretty that's impressive. Huge. But how big co- was the field in Ohio, Kim? Was it more than 50? Uh, it was just, yeah, we were 50 some, I think. But again, it's crazy. Vader Greedo coming out on top in Milwaukee. Gotta love it. That Vader Greedo is still out there doing work. Uh, oh, a lot, yeah. lot of runner ups, uh, a couple wins. So that yeah. that's the, that's the deck I've been mainly focusing on. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, my store champ is going to be while well, we are all three of us in Disney World. So <laughs> I'll be it. on the other side of the country. And then this last weekend was Fresno. That was the second closest one to me. And uh, again, I was working all weekend, so I could not attend. So uh, competitive play for me. It looks like it might be out for this quarter but uh we'll get back after it next next round for sure 
and that's not we're not even going to touch on all the uh no news about um changes to op this this episode too much to talk about uh so we're going to move ahead oh. go ahead yep sorry well i know that you said that but there was one thing that we did not point out last week when we were talking about when you talk about organized i think the one the one thing worth mentioning is that you notice that world championships starting in 2020 for all star wars games are going to be invite only yep that's so i hope, I they, even... have, hope they have press passes because we'll be going to observe <laughs> yeah yeah because I, I i even read that and didn't see it the first time i read through yep. it and, and when you sent that screenshot back i was because i have not heard a lot of people say anything about that so i just wonder if some other people glazed over it like i did so it's a whole year from now. Things can change. FFG just changed like dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you were not aware, uh, I don't know where you've been because uh, it's been all over the place. Uh, Jeremy's Wern made an appearance at the Team Covenant Masters weekend, which was their kind of big casual Destiny tournament. It sounded like it was a really great time for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. um, kind of very loose tournament rules. They had structured play, but they didn't have structured play. And everybody came in with something. And it was, it sounded like a great time. Um, but he did a, a demonstration game with Zach Bunn. Zach Bunn played um, Han Ray, uh, a, a new trilogy's variation of Han Ray. Um, and Jeremy brought a deck with convergence in it. Uh, I do want to preface this. It, it was funny that Zach was playing a trilogy's deck. So the last, the most three recent sets, Jeremy was playing a deck that had convergence and every other set. So he was basically playing an in infinite format. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess he's allowed. You know what I mean? Like he can do whatever he wants. He's the designer. He can yeah. Essentially, stack the deck if if he wants to. So the big deal was Palpatine. Uh, you know, Palp three. I guess is what we're going to call him. Um, unlimited power. Uh, great subtitle for the way this character is played. Um, mm -hmm. Ten health, which you're like, oh my gosh, only ten health. And then you read his ability. This character has plus one health for each ability on it, and those abilities do not count towards his upgrade limit. <laughs> That's sick. So, like, he was playing, oh. he had, Jeremy, I believe, had two force speeds, um, force, uh, force protection. Oh, God. Uh, like, force, like, all, like, he said the that his deck had the ability of putting eight on Palpatine. Um, so now you're looking at 18 health Palpatine. Uh, and the power <laughs> action allows you to roll a die from one of those abilities into your pool. Um, so you can imagine getting a double use out of either a force speed or a force throw. Now, the rest of us know that when this Palpatine hits the table, all those cards will have rotated out. Um, but Palpatine and Infinite is going to be disgusting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, all those the, all those Awakenings uh, abilities are just going to be like, what? Well, and what I think is going to happen, too, is that in that format, you're not going to see, like, any nerfs because it's going to be right. like it just – I think it's going to be like a broken format, to be perfectly honest. And yes. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a higher card draw too, eventually. Palpatine Snoke, eat Palpy <laughs> Snoke. <laughs> oh yeah, man, these decks could get really nasty real quick, especially with stuff like this where you're gaining a bunch of health by putting a ton of abilities on it. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Um, and then you're doing things like Rise Again. It's just it's gonna be nasty for sure. And this die isn't bad. I mean, it's it's no uh, no. Two melee, no, two melee, two focus, two shield, a resource, and a blank. Like, you probably take everything except for the blank. Obviously, uh, yeah. You you're gonna want those resources. You're gonna want those shields. Unless two focus is really nice. Yeah, two focus is great, and of course, two sticks. Two sticks is awesome. Uh, so I want a uh, draft where I'm drafting convergence and legacies, so I can play Palpatine Yoda. <laughs> that would be the craziest luckiest draw ever <laughs> that would be the luckiest draw ever <sighs> just saying um he also revealed the sentinel messenger as a non-unique uh blue character who cannot have blue abilities played on him but after you activate this character look at the top card of your deck and you may play that card paying his cost um so basically you're getting an extra card every turn uh which is kind of cool it's um, and if you're not familiar with Sentinel Messenger, this is a this is a character a concept that came out um, in some comic books oh, where yeah. uh, after Palpatine uh, kicked the bucket, he had all these droids that came out and like took over the Empire for him for a hot second. I or at least... go ahead. No, go ahead. 
uh i like i like this guy eight for eight is pretty good uh mm-hmm. the the cost the cost effectiveness is really good uh die sides are very nice and um i don't like that you can't play blue abilities on him i don't know how thematic that would be maybe because he's a droid not a mm. force user uh but other than that cool card uh great spoiler the art's cool too right all these palpa art are it's really good mm-hmm. um we got to look at two upgrades for storm and palpatine's lightsaber um palpatine's lightsaber uh, has that ability synergy to it after you play this upgrade gain resources equal to the number of ability upgrades on attached character to a maximum of two um so he basically pays for himself mm-hmm. uh and then for storm which has been the talk of the town four resources um blue character only special place one resource on this upgrade deal damage to a character equal to the number of resources on this upgrade reroll this die instead of removing it jeez um, and then the, look at i mean the die sides two three range three range four indirect two discard two shields and a, and a special and four is cheap let's be honest for that and, yeah in yeah. this game currently it's cheap yeah yeah it's cheap now maybe it's going to change but um, aren't we glad there's not a holocron to bring that out with well jeremy was playing holocron <laughs> 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 which i like thought that's, was so funny oh that's maybe they'll painful, get their value but... back who knows? That'd I be mean, worth three hundred and fifty-seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Asterisk. See episode one seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's true. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's again. We look at these cards like it's like when we looked at Palpatine number one. It was like, oh man, that's going to be killer card, and then it wasn't. And it's then it's sort of like it was for Monk, but not for anyone else. <laughs> um, uh and you know then we looked at vader it was like well maybe we're just over anticipating him being good and then he actually was good so who knows maybe we're getting better at judging the value of these cards <laughs> i mean this is four costs no blank sides 50 percent damage That's... no it's higher uh what is that 66 percent or whatever damage sides yes yes two-thirds yeah, yeah wow. it's ridiculous uh i I don't see a reason you wouldn't play two of these besides the fact that it's legendary. It might be hard to get. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It'll be expensive. Yeah, I feel like a lot of these convergence cards are going to top the top the market, secondhand market in terms of price. Well, but who knows? Maybe the style of play changes and these cards aren't viable. We don't know. True. Yeah. yeah you know, lots, lots can change. Yep. Um, and then we got to look at two events, a blue event uh, free forsaken. Uh, play only if a player has exactly one die in their pool. Remove a die showing a value of two or less. Ooh. Um, and then the a sinister piece, discard a card from your hand to remove a die showing a value of two or more. Um, so again, these are just... We've seen the removal formula in events over and over again. This is just another way of removing cards, or removing mm-hmm. die off the field. So, I'm okay with that. I mean, I I like especially especially zero cost. I mean, I don't discarding a card to remove a die. It could be worth it. It just depends on what bubbles up to the top of the meta, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd remove. I I play a sinister piece to remove. You know, a five range or a you mm-hmm. know seven indirect off of a planetary bombardment or something. Of mm-hmm. course, I definitely see uh-huh. sinister piece taking um more of a you know a a standard index than forsaken i think forsaken mm. is yeah it might be good in a uh mixed damage deck or a mixed damage meta but i mean you're gonna get a lot of your die resolved at the same time you're not gonna see like a single die sitting out there at the end especially two for mm. less than two yeah. someone might save something like a six for three or something like that but not two or less i feel like and if you're playing Forsaken at the beginning of your turn, you've you've had to roll in a die, and then your opponent had to roll in more die, so you're giving them momentum, which is unusual. Um, maybe if your deck is intentionally slower, but... Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I like all the comic book references. Uh, Forsaken also was uh, referring... Uh, the imagery is from... Um, oh, shoot. Uh, it's from the early Darth Vader comics. As soon as Vader turned into no, nope, just kidding. I forget which comic Vader comic is. This is when he was going with the, the other people. Then you know, I'll look it up and talk later about it. <laughs> that was that was. We'll do a whole show on these 
once the whole set comes out. That's right. Just just That's ignore right. me. That's right. Um, so asterisk uh, C episode one twenty. <laughs> <laughs> um, so six cards uh, that Jeremy brought to the table. Uh, it's really interesting too because we've seen with these challenge decks that they bring to weather or two events to spoil cards. They can't play all, like they're not building these decks around these six cards. These are like the six cards PR has told them they can spoil. So he's probably like, here's six cards. I'm going to build a deck around it. Great. Maybe. That's probably why he had to play infinite, you know, because he didn't have anything else. There weren't enough abilities he could spoil. Uh, How did he do? Did he clean up or? I didn't. I didn't actually watch the end of the game. Oh. He was doing well. I also think that they were playing in such a way that allowed Jeremy to show all these cards. I don't think I don't think either one of them was trying terribly hard. Oh. But it was cool. I mean, it was a great, it was kind of a really cool way for them to do these. Uh, mm-hmm. Almost like, you know, again, if you, if um, FFG is doing more streaming uh, and they've got some dates later this month where they're going to be streaming the new Convergence starters and they're going to be streaming the new draft set. Is that right? The new draft yeah, set? Yeah, the draft set mm-hmm. is on. Yeah, the draft set is on. Hang on. I actually have the dates. Um, un momento, por favor. Somebody, I can't. February 19th are the starters. February 21st is the draft with convergence boosters. Somebody and was apparently- there and they said, yeah, that he was beating beat everybody. <laughs> who, who was that? I couldn't see the name. Uh, Fallon 85. Oh, Fallon 85. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, I'm sure the dude knows how to play, right? I hope so. <laughs> well, I mean, he had how many ch- world championships from Netrunner prior to becoming to it? So... Prior to being a designer for Destiny, like, dude knows his stuff. Yeah, dude knows his stuff. So. <laughs> um, so if that wasn't enough, uh, FFG decided to say, hey, let's drop an article. Um, so the article, focus of the article is on downgrades. Um, we saw downgrades show up in the initial convergence announcement. Mm-hmm. And we were like, eh, it's like when they released plots and they weren't all that great. Um, except now we see all these downgrades and, eh, maybe they are kind of good. Uh um, yeah, I feel like one, they hit the gas pedal a little bit on those, you know, because yeah. plots mm-hmm. took a couple of sets to warm up, and this one, like, now nah, let's just let's go yeah, right on in. For sure. Um, so they gave us uh, Asajj Ventress, the bounty hunter version, and Dengar, also a bounty hunter. Um, There's like, a lot of people happy about that. And we know that this set is playing a lot on character names, character subtitles. Mm-hmm. Um, so Asajj, again, bringing in the idea of um, hand size uh, has always been a, a a trait of her card um after a character has has a damn sorry after a character that has a downgrade on it takes damage from this die you may discard a character from your hand to remove one of that character's character or upgrade dice um, you mean so discard a card from your hand discard a card from your hand to remove one of their dice yes so some great built-in removal of course you have to mill yourself to do it um yeah so it's really going to depend on how viable mill is in the next Right, you oh, wouldn't right. want to do this if someone's you know trying to chew through your deck. But right. um, this against this against Vader would be great because you could get rid of one of his die consistently every turn. Mm-hmm. Um, if you and can, she's got she's got nice die sides too, though. I mean, mm-hmm. I think this is a better version of Asajj than what we previously had. A lot of people say she's going to be more playable. Let's hope so. Mm-hmm. Um, at thirteen, sixteen, that's not bad. Twelve health, pretty good. Mm-hmm. And she's so maybe we'll... she's really working with the downgrades too. She you basically you gotta put downgrades on your enemies to be mm-hmm. able to pop her um her special off basically or text mm-hmm. off. Yeah. Um Dengar uh also related to um downgrades. After you activate this character, you may deal one damage to a character that has a bounty on it. So bounty That's is nice. a subtype of an up of a downgrade. Mm-hmm. Um so he has that ping damage that we uh, have seen a lot recently in some of these uh cards. Um, so which is great and his his 11 14 uh is a little low on the point side his die is also reflected at that with only one range and two range and one melee mixed damage uh always a little rough but uh 10 health not too bad nice to see dingar in here like i said there's a disrupt side which i feel like we hadn't seen a lot of for a while that's true yeah agreed um and he's got more of that um because they did release his uh they spoiled one of his upgrades, uh, the mm-hmm. Dengar's Flare Blade. I didn't even know he had one of those things. Fire, I don't know much about Fire Blade. Fire Blade. See, I, I, yes, reading is hard. 
Everyone stay in school. <laughs> um, two melee, four modified melee, two disrupt, uh, two shields, resource, and a blank. After you play this upgrade, you may deal one damage to a character that has a bounty on it. So oh, great wow. synergy. Um, and power action. If this upgrade is on Dengar, turn one of his character dice to a side showing a value of one, uh, which, uh, you know, so that one range, one less... melee, one disruptor. So that's everything... less exciting, unless you want, unless you rolled, you know, the four modified melee on on the fire blade. Well, oh, then right. you want to turn it to the sticks. Yeah, yeah. I can see. Uh, that will let you turn it to anything but the two range. So that's, I mean, he's got some options for you. Yeah, uh, I think it's. Um... It's gonna hurt once you got a bounty on you, especially if you're playing Dengar and he's got his fire, fire blade, his flare blade. Uh, you're gonna get. <laughs> it looks like a flare. <laughs> it does look like a flare. That's a very different effect. But that's yeah. two damage every single time he activates, regardless of what he rolls in. And he, I mean, you, know, you, you can have shields, I guess. But well, the up the fire blade only does damage when you play the upgrade. Oh, okay. it doesn't look like that's a. Oh okay. yeah, I thought so it was his one ability. Still, still, even one yeah. damage every time. Hear damage plus one it's every gonna single time. Yeah, I it's mean gonna that's either going to pop a shield and get it out of your way, um, so you don't. So you, your dice can do the yeah. your dice can do the work for you, or it is just that little. I mean, we found like indirect does it too with just pinging that little damage off. It mm -hmm. starts to make a difference. Well, there's plenty of times where you're just saying like, okay, well I'll active I activate this character to win. You know, you just had to do yep. one damage. You don't even have to roll roll your dice in. Right. Yep. Um, and then we also saw the punishing one, Dengar's ship, uh, two resource vehicle. Not like we need another cheap vehicle in this game. Um, it is cheap. And this one uh, has some great synergy when it comes to uh, defeating a character with a bounty. Once that happens, you may ready the support, and if Dengar's in play, um, you may activate it so it's kind of like a balatik action in a way mm -hmm. um i i don't see this one getting as much play it seems uh, in a 30 card deck i think the punishing one is not uh not going to be the game winner for you if you play it with bala <laughs> ba bala dengar <laughs> in infinite all yellow everything <laughs> mono yellows we're coming back yeah um, so along with these cards, we got to see four downgrades, um, which uh, four new downgrades. It was like another one they talked about, which we've seen before. Um, I'm kind of excited about these. I think downgrades are going to be a thing. They look really nasty. Uh, they do. <laughs> it's going to, it's, it's going to be a bad day when you're getting downgrades and bounties on you for sure. Um, secrets laid bare is an Intel downgrade for uh, blue neutral. After attached character is activated, reveal three random cards from its controller's hand. Mm. Uh, so, allowing blue to get a look at that hand, which is something that really only red has been able to do thus far. Um, could you imagine if you could do this with Kylo? Oh, oh yeah, you doing this? I mean, he's me. gonna ro you you right? He, is he rotating out or is he staying in? Wait, he's staying in. He's part of the two players. Oh side. boy! So that that'll give you a good good look at uh, colors for sure. Especially in their with hand, some towels in action and some uh, mother mm -hmm. mother stuff going on with their uh, mm -hmm. crystal ball and all that. Yep. So that's great. And then mind extraction um, for the villains. Attached character loses all of its non-special abilities. That's uh, nice. Action exhaust attached character to discard this downgrade. So the opponent has the ability to exhaust their character. To get rid of this ability, so but that that character has to be exhausted without rolling the die in. Right. Um, so this would like people are saying this is going to be great against Vader, right? Mm -hmm. um, or that Palpatine, right? Or that Palpatine, anything, right? Because this is going to lose all of its abilities that aren't related to a special side on this die. Uh, and there are so many uh, gnarly, you know, cards out there. You have to put this on Thrawn, and he can no longer look at your hand. Put this on Snoke, he can no longer. Um, he loses his power action. Mm -hmm. you know like this mind extraction it's two resources way expensive but um it can cripple the core mechanic of a lot of decks forcing them to exhaust their character uh and basically essentially losing a turn from that character mm -hmm. just to get rid of this card mm -hmm. and i feel like you'd want to play it after they're already exhausted so they'd have to go into the next round exhaust mm -hmm. them again oh yeah for sure and not be able to use them and then 
So that would give you, well, that really would turn the tide in your favor for a little bit. That's, and that's a that's a very smart order of play. I actually thought about that. You could essentially buy yourself two turns. Mm-hmm. Um, depending, of course, depending on what the what the ability itself was, but mm-hmm. solid. I would I, totally I like let them roll it out and get excited about what they have, then play it, so then all those die go away. Well, the die don't go away. Or the... Well, if they lose the ability, though, right? They lose the ability, right. So if their ability is die related, maybe, you know, something would happen. Maybe, I mean, and I'm to... trying to think, we don't probably don't have, we don't have as many of those. I'm kind of thinking more awakening abilities that have those, but those will be bye bye. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll base, see. We'll yeah. see. Um, mine extraction, I think, is going to be versatile, but mm-hmm. uh, it, it may be a meta call, too. Yeah. I think this is really a good play. Like, if you're trying to get around Vader re rolling his die back in, uh, mm-hmm. you can, yeah, once he rolls out, you can play this play some removal and then he can't roll them back out. Um, and then it really forces him to make a choice. Does he risk that you sit on removal and just keep playing with vine extraction or does he waste a whole turn and exhaust and get this off? So yeah, it definitely adds complexity to the game. Uh, I, I like how they continue to do that. Every, every set we get a new mechanic, we get a new little something that's making the mm-hmm. game more complicated uh in a sense but still you know very accessible for new players um so yeah really cool yeah and i think cards like this are really going to make you know control decks come back into the forefront of of a Mm -hmm. viable um archetype that can win events Mm -hmm. um and then enticing reward so here's our uh bounty uh that they revealed after attached characters defeated you may play an equipment or weapon from your hand or discard pile for free so uh so there's your dark saber or your uh, who knows i mean wh- equipment or weapons so not abilities but uh, there's plenty of great uh three and four cost upgrades yeah uh, that this would be benefit from and then put it on that you know put it on that battle droid or put on that like you know you know it, uh, especially the three wide decks are going to really hurt mm-hmm. when this gets put on them yeah, and then you can at least, I mean, you can take that opportunity, you can pitch that good card if you need it to re-roll, or, or one of these character abilities you can, to get it in your discard pile so you can pull it back out for free. You could mm-hmm. use it to pay for your Verpeen Sniper. <laughs> <laughs> you could. You definitely, it's yellow. Uh, <laughs> doesn't mean it's a good idea, but you could. Um, and enticing rewards only for villains, so you know, it doesn't help. Uh, not help sorry, heroes. Uh, and last Story not least, my life. hampered uh, zero for the zero calls for the uh, red. I no like this more one. Then one of attached characters' character dies can be resolved during each turn, and those dies cannot be modified. That I like. That is also a great Vader. I like uh, that one. Card. That's, that's especially rough. if you're relying on those <clears throat> on those uh, blue sabers that have like like you know three modified sides. Yeah, this this takes this takes that uh that primary die out of the running. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was I, asked, love it. I was figuring out how we're gonna get rid of uh, downgrades, uh, but now I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so there's been some talk on whether or not unshackle um, an event ambush event discard a downgrade from play. It's only cost one, uh, and doesn't you know it can be any downgrade, which is uh, a little frustrating that it's not like zero cost or you know based on how expensive the downgrade is um but there's been a lot of talk on whether or not it's gonna be an auto auto include yeah and that's that's gonna be a meta call honestly yeah it's a meta uh, call a lot of people c- compared unshackle to rend you know rend uh, had has had his highlight for a little bit but uh most people play around play around it and they don't uh, worry about including those cards in their decks anymore mm-hmm. yeah if downgrades become a thing for sure unshackled will be a uh a two of mm-hmm. full art two of i mean if they ever decide to put sideboards mm-hmm. in destiny then yeah unshackle yeah for sure throw that in your sideboard and throw it in when you need it but mm-hmm. uh that'll never happen who knows never say never who knows that's true op just like changed face so you're gonna tell me destiny is invite only um it, we could we could see sideboards <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. You want to get that crazy this early in the in the game? We can see sideboards for sure. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's. Do, there's one more set of things we need to talk about, and we're gonna make it our discussion topic for the week. All right, let's talk about it. 
You know, Mike, I just can't seem to get the cards I need in the booster packs I've bought. I'm still missing a Mother Talzin, a Darth Maul, and I need some more battle droids. That five wide droid deck isn't going to build itself, and I have all these extra Yodas. Seriously, Kim, I told you, check out Armada Games. You can buy and sell Destiny cards on their website, shoparmada.com. It's just a few simple clicks and bam, you are done. I used it just the other day, and now I got two, count them, two mall savers heading my way. Hey, what are you guys talking about? We're in the middle of a break here. Jason, you know how you've got all those extra cards from all those booster boxes you open? Mike says you can sell them online super easy. No way, seriously? How? I've got to make room before this next set comes out. Jason, whether you're new to the game or a seasoned vet, Armada Games has just what you're looking for. You can buy and sell your Destiny singles all from the comfort of your living room. Pre-order the latest sets of boosters and find the droids you are looking for. You can also check out their selection of Destiny accessories. And you'll get free shipping on orders over $75. For an even better deal, be sure to use the coupon code THECHANCECUBE and receive 5% off your Destiny purchase. Visit their website at shoparmada.com. Armada Games. Get in here and game. But you know what I always say, speak softly and drive a big tank. <laughs> Allies of Necessity uh, is going to be the draft set that is going to accompany Convergence um, and the new block of Star Wars Destiny and presumably will be the required draft kit for future drafts once Convergence mm-hmm. is released. Um, a, a new set of, I want to say 20 cards is what I saw. Mm-hmm. Um, that are going to be uh, quite a departure from the previous draft set and hopefully we'll make a better drafting experience. Um, so so we'll see. Uh, three char- Four characters were all revealed um, and then an event and a plot, our first plot in a, in a draft set, which is kind of cool. Um, so first off, uh, there's a character for each color as we're used to seeing with uh, the draft sets. Finn Rao is a character, a pilot and a trooper uh, with a power action, play a red card from your hand, paying its cost, then deal one indirect damage to an opponent. Um, and 11 13. So, obviously, in draft, you could be playing him at 11 points for nine mm-hmm. health. Um, I think still, uh, yeah, 13 points, not a horrible character for a lineup, uh, especially with yeah. uh, two, two range sides, uh, especially if you need to splash red in there. No, if you can find uh, a 17 cost. You know, elite seventeen cost heavy hitter, uh, yeah. or even mid range that w- would pair pretty nicely. Bring in like a different color to the table or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. His dice sides are nothing to you know shake a stick at. That's for sure. For his for his calls for sure. Yeah. And I like that his power action is essentially a, a one dam one damage ping. Um, mm-hmm. as long as you plan on playing, you know, red cards from your hand, you could be playing an upgrade. You could play an event. Doesn't even matter as long yeah, as you're you going to play well a red it. card. You know, use the power action to deal that damage. Yeah. So, so I like it. Um, mm-hmm. Outer Rim Outlaws, the yellow character. Uh, it's the only non-unique uh, in the colored set of three, which I thought was interesting because mm-hmm. we didn't have that last time. Um, Ten points, eight health, two range, two mm-hmm. melee for a dollar, two indirect. So a nice, uh, <laughs> a nice mixed assortment there. One disrupt, one resource, and a blank. Um, power action play a yellow card from your hand then re-roll an opponent's die or re-roll up to three of yours the mixed damage always makes me nervous I don't really like I was gonna say, mixed damage I would agree well and I don't know that I agree to pay 10 for 8 health like I feel like I would be able to draft something chances are I could draft something maybe a little better maybe I mean worst case you like yeah if you had the points but like man 10 points for 8 costs I just I don't feel like that's what we have. I'm trying to think what Lobot and so I don't know. They just seem it seems meh. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. No, it wouldn't I agree. be my first choice. I mean, compared to the compared to um, I why can't I remember her name from the previous rival set? Um, oh. I do it too. The last time I talked about her, Ketsu, 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 Ketsu. yeah. Um, as long you know, it's, compared to Ketsu, maybe Outer Rim Outlaw is not a huge improvement. Uh, yeah. But I like the control, and I think it's interesting. Uh, if you're playing a lot of yellow cards at least once per turn, you can do a lot of um, mm-hmm. craziness. Mm-hmm. Or re- you know, playing a card 
actually playing a card and then re-rolling up three of your dice is feels way better than discarding a card from your hand to re-roll three of your dice. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and then for blue, we got a Count Dooku. Uh, so this would be Count Dooku number three, I guess, when it comes down to the number of times he's showed up in Destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, two melee, two melee, a focus, a discard, and a resource. Play a blue card from your hand, paying its cost, then force an opponent to discard a card from their hand. Um, it feels very much like uh, you know a previous Count Dooku that was dealing with um, card card discard. Um, this I don't is, know. I like this card a lot. Yeah, will, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll be playing this in organized, um, paired with like a seventeen cost, maybe like. I don't know, like a Kylo or something like that. We'll see. We'll see what we mm. get for 17 cost. Uh, but again, his die sides are really good. The two ma the double two melees are good. Power action's pretty good. Uh, the discard focus and a resource. Yeah, I like it. I think his yeah, cost his is sides are expensive. Decent. 13, you know, 13 for nine health, two die is pretty good. And uh, so notice that this is AM. Pretty unusual, but very intentional, I'm sure, for this particular draft set. Um, each of these characters has two subtitles. Uh, so Count Dooku's a leader and a Sith. Uh, the Outer Rim Outlaw was a scavenger and a scoundrel. And then the Finral was a pilot and a trooper. Um, so these are all subtitles that are most likely going to be very prevalent uh, in the mm -hmm. Kimberly block as a whole because we know they're going to be playing a lot into those subtitles. Um, speaking of which, Claudite Shapeshifter, the uh, six health neutral character, in this particular draft set, um, after you activate this character, you may choose a character subtype. <laughs> Until the end of this round, this character gains the chosen subtype. So, That's pretty cool. Um, it is cool when you consider it being paired with um, the event that's in the draft set, Chance Encounter. Um, but also interested to see how that could play into other cards that you may draft in Convergence. Things that they haven't even started revealing those cards to us yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we know probably a good chunk of the set's going to have to do with subtypes. I see a Claudite played in a trooper deck. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it may be wedged in there somewhere in a three wide because it gains that um, it gains that title, and then you can use that to uh, take advantage of the the trooper cards that we're seeing and um, mm -hmm. just the speculation that's been out there about how heavy trooper decks will be. So. Yeah, and it's got two blanks, so that'll play right into the uh, the your your favorite soon to be plot, Kim. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to that plot. Exactly. <laughs> I really, I really am gonna go out. I and I'm probably so is everyone else. But that's, um, I may just not even. I mean, just go straight to the wall at, at my local shop and buy the troopers up instead of even bothering with trying to get them in a box. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, so we saw the plot and we saw an event from this particular draft set. Uh, the plot, uh, the event, uh, one resource chance encounter. Choose and do one. So either spot a leader to turn a die to any side, spot a scoundrel to roll three dice, and spot a trooper to remove a die showing a value of one or less. Um, so uh, that's cool. Almost. Well, this, yeah, I, I like I like that because this card will most likely be useful in whatever deck you build in a draft situation. Mm -hmm. And they're all control based. They just control in different ways. So it all depends on which characters you, you um, picked on your front lineup. Um, but perhaps the most interesting of all is that this draft set contains a plot. It is a minus two plot, which means if you wanted to, you could play this plot and all three of the main draft characters. No, you can't. Just kidding. Lies because of the, um, because of the text. Or forget I just said that. Scratch that. Reverse. Um, <laughs> Editing. A minus, I know, a minus two plot uh, include only if two or more characters on your team share a color. So you have to have two reds, two blues. So that's why you ignore everything I just said. Um, and then after setup, discard a card from your hand and lose two resources. So this is Good. the plot that this is the plot that we all speculated when we first talked about negative plots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the I'm going to give you something awesome and then I'm going to cripple you. This basically means your first turn's like stupid. Like you don't get to do anything your first turn. You're you're a turn behind the entire game. Yeah. Is is there a thirty two point pairing that would make this worth it? Thirty two. That's twenty one and nine. Right? Did I do math? No. 
21 and 9 is, is actually 30. We can yeah. do that right now. Yeah, 12. 21 and 11. Wow. No, there's pairings. There's blue pairings. There's yeah, Palpatine. it's got to be. Right, it's got to be. Well, you could go. Color. I mean, could. Oh, so you could easily go four wide. I mean, I'm thinking math wise because you're likely playing most of these characters single die because you're not going to get an elite in a draft unless you're really lucky. It happens, but. Um. So right, wouldn't I mean you could be looking at going four wide with some meteor folks. I think this would be a killer plot in draft. I don't. I'm curious if we're. I would also be curious. Are we going to see this card played in standard? And I'm going to probably say no. But mm-hmm. I could not be. There may be a pairing out there that makes this card worth it. Yeah, it depends. It's, but it's, to your point, you me. could do in standard. You could do a four wide that has better characters than our typical four wides. So our typical four wides are like non uniques mm-hmm. across the board. You could actually maybe put something really solid here in in, um, in a four wide deck, but again, it's got to be really good. I wonder, allies of necessity. I wonder, could you squeeze in a, a third non unique with a Plo Koon deck and give him another ability, and would that be worth it? Mm. I don't know. I'm just making up stuff now. Now I'm just speculating. I'm curious. I can't wait to see what the community comes up with when it oh. comes to this card. All yeah. the all the good Palpatine pairings for blue blue are all <laughs> at twelve. They they oh. I'm just sure they did their research. <laughs> yeah. Of course, like Mother Talzin is twelve. Maul is twelve. Like there's just uh, who else could you do? <laughs> Kylo doesn't fit. Anakin. Well, they fit. At, they saw you 10. coming, Mike. They're ten, so it'd be thirty one. So you'd be giving away a point. Well, there's there's better minus one plots than this one to get those guys in there. Yeah, you need you, you'd have like this is only useful if you're playing 32 points. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to look right. for a good 32. Yeah, because otherwise I would absolutely take one of the negative one plots instead. Someone's gonna tell us because that is the question of the week. <laughs> oh, Captain Phasma's 12. Like all, man, all the good <laughs> pairs are 12. It seems like. Who else would be a good pair? Now some of those balances of the force make a little more sense, huh? I'll, I'll think about it. I'll definitely yeah. think about <laughs> it. I love it. Um, so draft, how do you think draft is going to be different with convergence? Like, I mean, compared to what we've seen so far. And Kim, I know you're a lover of the format. I am. Uh, are you excited about this particular draft set compared to Rivals? I think it offers a little bit more. Um, it's a little meatier, I guess. Like having... Um, I don't know, plots like this, cards like Chance and Counter, I think you are getting um, some better characters. Like, the, I agree with Mike that this Dooku is, is pretty nice. Like, I would I would gladly play him in draft. Mm-hmm. And I would play um, um, Finn as well. Mm-hmm. Outer Rim Outlaw, eh. But maybe. I could be proven wrong about that. Yeah, totally agree. And I, I can't wait to see what else Convergence is going to have to offer uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to these sub, these titles. Because I think that's... If you're going to build an entire draft set, essentially, around titles... Yeah. Because that's what it feels like right now. Granted, we've only seen six cards out of the 20. But maybe the other 14 cards have absolutely nothing to do with titles. But uh, I yeah. don't know. I think this at least helps make draft interesting again. Because it... It's. I think it's struggled to gain its footing in a lot of communities. Um, so I'd love to see it take on a, I don't know, step up and have a bigger representation. I hope maybe this is the start of it at least. Mm-hmm. I, I have a couple feelings about the new draft format. I think it's going to, well, the, the, the way it's changing with the new set. I think that it's going to be a little bit tougher to build. It'll be a little bit more, Mm -hmm. more, more involved. You can't, you, I mean, you could just slap cards together, but I don't think it'll be as useful as someone who's going there to draft and win. They'll build uh, slick combos and stuff like that. And also with downgrades in draft, I think it's going to, that's going to cause some salt. I think Mm, I can see that. Yeah. You, You know, in a deck where you can't, put two unshackleds in just in case 
right mm. you're gonna be lucky because you're that's gonna... gonna be something somebody probably grabs early in draft and let's see how many downgrades you get in your um packs like is it gonna be like plot cards or uh, uh like or plot cards or um battlefields battlefields where you're just getting a ton of them so then yeah, every... so, so far a lot of them are are uh, uncommon so but okay. unshackle is common so maybe you know your chances are higher but you know, again, you're only opening six packs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you get a if someone puts a downgrade on you like first turn or second turn, that's like a that's not conducive to a game where we're trying to get people involved, especially mm -hmm. with a format that is very inviting to new players. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a fair point. Yeah. yeah Welcome granted, to this game. I'm going to cripple yeah. your characters. Yeah. yeah, I didn't really think. I I really hadn't thought about yeah the downgrades. That's a very good point. I think it'll this hurt some people socio-political aspects of this of this uh, draft set thank you mike hill that's what we're here well, for and, that's what the chance yeah you're right though for. i think I, I think mike's right i think it'll and maybe new folks might be a little turned off by that and then i think maybe some people who have been playing it may actually turn it up a little bit for people who've been playing for a while which i don't think is really the design of a draft set to your point mm -hmm. but will that make draft more interesting for people who've been playing destiny more competitively because it is going to be more complicated and i think so i don't know um but you want to grow the community so you don't want to so then do you offer do you think they're going to retire the other draft set i mean it's still in it's not rotating out hmm. no i say you leave it in and you just choose you or or the the um, oh, whoever's organizing chooses uh, they just tell you ahead of time what draft set it'll yeah. be yeah um, real quick, I didn't get to mention this about Chance Encounter. I like how they are doing uh, multiple things with one card. I like that too. Using the titles, so they're again they're getting a lot more involved. This this card brings a lot more to the table than any any other card. First off, it mm -hmm. it, it attaches itself to um, titles. Secondly, you have choices. It's I don't know. The game's evolving and it's going mm -hmm. in a in a good direction. It's definitely. Mm -hmm. It's ramping up, and so is our, so is the amount of people playing it. So it's good. I, th I think it's healthy. Just not in my local. I need to get more players. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you may see. I mean, you may this new set. Like I think we we've seen that each time that people go away from the game, and then when a new set comes back, they they kind of swing back. True. And True. this is offering an awful lot to come back to. Mm -hmm. Especially okay. twenty four cent packs from GameStop. Yeah, if we can pull All those right. Keyforge decks out of everybody's hands, we'll be in business. No, my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I should bring some of those. I might bring a deck or two with us. I was already going to bring a couple. I should, I should do that. Okay, well, you can teach me how to play. Yeah, yes. security won't stop me. Like, TSA won't stop me for having those in my carry-on. All right, I'm going to bring you your first deck, Jason. Oh, thanks. Destiny. I got you, buddy. Don't tell Sarah. Um, I'll bring one for Sarah. It's fine. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, un completely unrelated to anything we've got going on here, let's uh, let's go ahead and answer that question of the week. Question <laughs> of the week. There can be no mistakes this time. So last week we wanted to know: Can heroes win without Yoda? No. Which I think is a no. pretty interesting question. <laughs> I do think the general consensus was no. Um, not everybody said that. Zach Shields said Han 3, Poe 2 could possibly get it done, provided they get lucky in pairing, same as Cassian and Jin. The heroes are always on the... You know what I mean? They're the underdogs every time, right? Uh, in, in Poland, I mean, they're doing it without Yoda. Apparently. <laughs> Cody said... <laughs> Cody just asked my question of the week is where are the spoilers for the new set and we got some gotcha. so, there you go. right here Ta -da. we got you Cody we got you um, Timothy has said only if uh, they roll hot every time fair enough so I'm not winning with heroes <laughs> and John mentioned that he, uh, hero vehicles running red yellow is crazy powerful I, red yellow is some of my favorite not that i've ever gone super well with it but i love red yellow 
Uh, all the healing that red has mixed with great removal from yellow will keep your team alive. Eros EL3 Rubble Tech makes so much money to drop all the supports you can handle. That sounds like a fun deck to play. It does sound like a fun deck to play. I'm wondering, though, they're losing. Red loses a lot of healing with the rotation. It loses Field Medic. Um... Oh, I can't think of what the other card is. There's another one that's uh I don't know if the chat will help me out or not. I'm trying to think what that other one was. Because there's the vehicle healing, and I think I don't know that you get I don't know if that maybe that stays. But you lose uh, I think that one stays as legacies, I believe. But you lose field medic, which was my favorite healing card, because it like healed two off a red character. Uh, hopefully it will gain one in the new set. Because he red has always been associated with heals, especially for mm-hmm. heroes. So Hopefully we, we'll see a little bit of that come back in. Yeah, I like Red Yellow a lot. I agree with John, but I don't know that I've seen it do... It's not always what you see floating to the top. Yeah. Or as um, Tab in the, the chat says, defensive position is not a healing card, but at least uh, refortifies your, your mm-hmm. shields. Yeah, so, that's a good one too. It's always a good one. Um, everyone, if you're watching live, thank you so much. Uh, hey. If you are listening via... Apple Podcasts, please get us a review. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit notify so you know every time we upload the show or anything else we may decide to upload uh, anytime soon or in the future. Um, Thank you, Mike and Kim, for joining me for another week of this wonderful show. Next week, I will see you all in Disney World. Next week, we'll only need two of these panels because I'll be at Jason's house the night of the show. That's true, you will be. I'll be really tired. Are we going to do a show or no? (laughs) I mean, I was gonna do a show. If you need to, if you need to sleep before your flights, well, we can, I may we need can to fly sleep without after you my if you like, Mike. Wait, <laughs> if you two are gonna be in the same room doing a show together, then I will definitely get on. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gotta hold it down. Uh, it could true. be chaos. It could be chaos. It um, will be chaos. We'll figure it out for sure. Yeah, uh, head over to our Facebook page uh, and answer the question of the week. With two extra points on your character team, what crazy combos are you looking forward to trying? Thank you. And have a great week, everyone. Bye. Thanks, y'all. Have a good night. This has been the Chance Cube, a Star Wars Destiny podcast, a nonprofit organization dedicated to building community through gaming. Visit our website for all things Star Wars Destiny, including our price watch, meta tracker, and latest articles from the Chance Cube family. Find our latest videos on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit us at patreon.com slash thechancecube. Your patronage allows us to grow this program and help us give back to the gaming community by sponsoring events, giveaways, and supporting our own community building initiatives. This is Mike Hill, the voice of the Chance Cube. Thanks for listening. The Chance Cube is not affiliated with Fantasy Flight Games, Lucasfilms, or the Walt Disney Company.